Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're gonna be taking another look at the Pentium Pro Barn Find machine. This is the machine that I picked up from a barn in downtown New Delhi. Um, we've, we've managed to get the machine working. We've got some really usable features in it. In this video, we're gonna do a few more upgrades just to try and make this a little bit more usable, a little bit more flexible, and to prepare it for some upcoming projects. So as you can see, we've got rather an array of kit to install in this machine. Uh, and a lot of it is actually linked together, but there's a couple of other things that are standalone issues that I wanted to resolve. Uh, the first is that we're going to upgrade the graphics card in this machine. I say upgrade, it's really more to do with compatibility issues. Uh, we're gonna replace the uh, original graphics chip that was in there with this S3 Trio 64V, and that's so that we get better uh, driver support uh, not only in Windows, but other OSs that I'd like to try out on this machine as well. So that's just a straight swap out. Uh, now, coupled with that for performance, uh, I'm also going to upgrade the RAM in this. I just happen to have another couple of SIMs. Uh, so we're going to go from the 32 megabytes that the system currently has to 64. Now, the rest of the equipment that's on the bench in front of me is really all linked together. Uh, so if you've been following this series, you'll know that at the moment the machine uses a SCSI controller and a SCSI hard disk. Now, not only is that very loud, uh, but it also gives me issues in the SCSI hard disk are very expensive. So if I want to swap out the hard disk in this machine, uh, it becomes a costly and timely exercise for me. So to deal with that, we're going to do a number of things. First, we're going to install this 88 controller. So this is a PCI card. It's gonna go into the one remaining PCI slot in the machine, and it's gonna allow me to use IDE hard disks with this machine. And in theory, IDE CD-ROM drives as well, but I'm actually gonna retain the SCSI card as well just for the CD-ROM drive because I quite like the setup that I've got there. Uh, now, coupled with that, I, I have a series of IDE hard disks on the bench here. These are all uh, between two and eight gigabyte drives. Uh, so they should give me the redundancy I need to be able to uh, swap out and install uh, different operating systems on this machine. Now, obviously, actually opening the machine and doing that uh, on a regular basis is going to put a lot of stress on an aging chassis, and it's also going to take up time, which is very valuable to me at the moment. Uh, so to get around that, I'm going to use this mobile rack solution. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the uh, five and a quarter inch floppy drive that's still in the machine and doesn't work. I'm going to swap it out for this uh, rack mount system. And what this will allow me to do is swap out the hard disks uh, a little bit easier because I can just take the caddy out of this and then just open the caddy, swap out the hard disk and put it back in. So it negates the need for me to open that chassis. So let's, um, let's get to it. A lot of this hardware, the, the, uh, the hard disks and the, the memory and the, the graphics card are old stock, but these are actually new pieces of equipment. This one's still in the shrink wrap. So let's unbox everything and, and see how we get on. Tell you what, this thing certainly doesn't get any lighter. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's just move you slightly. So the plan is to upgrade the RAM, the graphics card, swap out this floppy drive for the uh, enclosure, and then install that PCI card. So. I think the first thing I'm going to do is the superficial stuff. I'm going to get this, I'll get the thing disassembled and get this drive out and get the new enclosure in. So let's just pop you off. So the nice thing about this case is that all these drives are just held in with retention brackets. So if I just press these spring leaf clips here, the drive will come out. So. This drive at present just isn't working. It cleaned up nicely uh, compared to how it was when I got it, but and it is you know recognised by the system. Um, but for whatever reason, it just doesn't read discs. So it's, it's something I'll probably revisit at some point. But seeing as I only have a few five and a quarter inch discs anyway, uh, for now it's going to come out of the system. But what I do need to do 
is take these brackets off the side because I'll need to attach these to the uh, hard disk enclosure. So there you go, the brackets are on. Um, let's see if it fits. I'm not sure if I've got them in the right spacing or whether I need to come back one. I've got a feeling I need to come back one, but let's find out. Oh, it doesn't like that. Yep, I need to move back one. Okay, let's take two, see if this goes in. That's better. We're in on one side. Ah, okay. So I'm trying to force this thing in, it's not going in. The reason being, it's hitting the motherboard on the inside. Uh, what a pain. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to have to shuffle some stuff around in here. Um, it looks like the CD drive will go in this slot and then this can go in the one above. Let's, let's try that. So I don't suppose it really matters which way around these are. It would have been nice to have this down here just for access to this handle, but uh, no issue with it being there. So with this now in, the, the principle is basically that you pull this lever up, pull it out, and then you can pop this cover off and change out the hard disk inside. And that is surely going to be a lot easier than uh, what I would have had to do before, which would have been to take the front off, take the chassis off, um, take out this drive cage and replace this hard disk, put it all back together. So a much more elegant solution. Let's, uh, let's crack on with the rest. Okay, so first things first, need to have a little bit of a tidy up. Let's see what we're dealing with here. So I'm get some of these cables out of the way. So let's deal with the RAM first. Um, you can see we've got two sticks in here at the moment. Now the thing with EDO RAM is it has to be put in, in banks of two. So we have two, 32, uh, two 16 meg sticks in the moment. We're going to stick another two 16 meg sticks in to give us a total of 64 meg. EDO are my least favorite memory socket of all time. They are just so finicky to deal with. So you have to push in and then slot down and get those clips engaged. Early on in this build, I spent about a month chasing a fault symptom with this machine where it would just hang sporadically. And it was because one of these RAM chips just wasn't quite seated properly. Okay, so the RAM in, um, in terms of uh, PCI cards at the moment, we've got the graphics card, the SCSI controller, and the sound card. Now we're swapping this out, and then we're adding the IDE uh, adapter card as well. So what I'm gonna do is take this out and put the new graphics card in, and then I'm gonna move this PCI card for the uh, Sound Blaster Live down to the last slot so that our SCSI controller and our IDE controller are next to each other. So let's deal with the graphics card first. Our new S3 Trio 64 card to go in. Um, nice little card, one meg of onboard RAM. You can upgrade it to two megs. I'm going to see if I can get some chips to do that. Um, but as I say, this is being installed just because um, of compatibility issues with uh, some later OSs that I want to put onto this. Uh, in terms of performance, there's, there's not really much in it. This does have built-in MPEG decoding, which will be useful sort of for some uh, early Windows 95 games that made use of MPEG. Uh, but other than that, there's not, not much in it. it. Just This is a little bit of a, a better supported card. So it's out with the, uh, the Trident card, in with the S3. And then before we install that IDE card, I'm gonna move this sound card down. So this is just the um, Sound Blaster Live SB0100. Um, it's, it's, 
much better at dealing with uh, Windows 95 and 98 gaming, but I've got it in this rig because, uh, as we know uh, from other videos, the ISA slots don't work in this. So this is, a, as PCI cards go, it's got great uh, DOS compatibility for some early games. It's not 100%, but it's better than anything else that I've tried. So that will be going back in, just one slot lower. And before we put that in, we're going to install the uh, Promise Ultra 100 TX2 IDE controller card. Uh, so this is going to allow us to use ID hard disks. You can see it's actually a, a two-channel card, so it will take up to four devices. Uh, we're only going to use it for uh, a hard disk. Um, although if my SCSI CD-ROM drive eventually fails, then, then it would make sense to replace it with an IDE version as well. So there we go. So now we have the uh, the new S3 graphics card. We have the Adaptex SCSI controller. We have the Promise IDE controller and the Creative Sound Blaster Live. Now it's a shame that I won't be able to expand the system anymore because, as I said, the ISA slots don't work. Um, what I could do is make use of some of this uh, back plane here. Uh, maybe go with some compact flash to IDE adapters and negate the need to have a hard drive enclosure at all. Just have compact flash cards going into the back of the machine. Uh, not on the cards for now, um, but uh, without further ado, let's get all the cables put back in. So I think that's about as neat as I'm going to get it, to be honest. I mean, the issue is when you start putting this many bits of kit into a case, you're always going to run into issues. And then you have the, the fans which all connect on Molex connectors. Uh, rather than onto motherboard headers. So you can see I've had to make a little adapter here uh, just to get enough terminals to be able to connect everything. And even then it's a bit of a, a hodgepodge scenario with cables tucked into redundant bays and stuff. Um, but it should work. Um, let's put it back together and see if it does. So with the PC back together, guys, you can see we've actually got a really nice aesthetic with the hard disk enclosure in the front and its air holes matching up nicely with the air holes at the bottom of the case. There were a few teething problems. I hadn't appreciated that the key actually had to be inserted and turned in order for the drive to be powered. I'd assumed it was just a physical security feature, but it turns out it's to stop people actually using the hard disk as well. So now our Pentium Pro machine actually has a key lock, which prevents it from being used when we don't want it to be. As you can see, the, uh, the boot process has uh, been elongated somewhat as it has to poll that PCI card to see what devices it's using uh, before it moves on to the SCSI card. But after that, we get a normal boot experience. And at the present, I've installed DOS 6.22 on this system. That's not to say it's going to stay this way. I mean, the whole purpose of this was that we were going to be able to try different operating systems with this machine. And as well as the original 95 install, I think I might just need to try Windows NT. And as well as that, I've still got that copy of IBM OS 2 that I've been meaning to crack open in another video. So there you have it, guys. I hope this video was informative, just to give you a quick update on where we are with the BarnFind Pentium Pro. I'm really starting to like the way this system's coming together. I hope you're enjoying this series too. If you are, please don't forget to uh, like this video and subscribe if you're not a subscriber already. If you've got any questions or comments about anything I've done in this video, please drop those into the video description below. And until next time, take care. Bye-bye.